potential further upside for our market in comparison to some of our, our global peers and, and the idea of a potential divergence from the, I suppose, the mature markets of Europe and the US? I'd love to think that it was just Australia rallying today, but it was a rally across the region. We saw the Korean Cosby up by about 4%. The Australian market also doing well, up by about 2.2%. So altogether, a typical risk on day in the lack of any bad news coming through on the US front and the European front. Instead, we had some good news from China, and that really gave the market another leg up. We have a look at those HSBC PMI numbers. We did see a reading under 50 at 49.8. Still, it was higher than the previous month, so an increase there. And HSBC actually coming out to say that a reading of even 48 in these numbers still indicates 11 to 12 percent industrial production growth and 9 percent GDP growth. So that was a positive catalyst around the region. We also saw oil prices rising in the region. Not only that, some good earnings results coming through. So I think that made a huge difference. We saw oil search as well as Origin Energy really boosting that energy sector, which was up by a massive 3.2 percent. But it was gains across the board. For every one stock that fell, we saw two stocks gaining. And in terms of technicals, closing just below a very important technical level as well. We closed just below 4,175 points. And if you remember, that was last year's low. So if we have a look across the market, this is a two-year chart on the market. We just closed below that uh, number, which was the low in 2010 for the Australian share market. So if we can break that number and move higher um, and go back back up to the highs that we've seen recently, 4,300, will be an enormous challenge for the market. But if we have a look across the market, one of the best performers, Blue Scope Steel, up by a massive 13% today. We have seen brokers come out to reiterate buy and outperform ratings on the stock, so it did bounce back from yesterday's losses. But unfortunately, Billabong continuing to lose down another 6% today, and that's after a loss of 7% yesterday and 27% the day before. Just in terms of the buying trends that we saw today, Julia, as you mentioned, there a lack of bad news and some good news helping to accelerate the buying and I suppose underpin some, you'd have to still say, fragile confidence. But why the, the movement and the buying later into the session? I mean, previously we'd seen any strong movement ups were sold down late. That wasn't the case. We actually saw further buying into the afternoon, but I didn't see any real reason before because the China PMI came in, you know, relatively early in the day, if you like. If we have a look at those China PMI numbers, once those numbers came in, we did see that being a catalyst around the region. So if we have a look at the intraday graph of the Australian share market, this is what it looks like. Those China numbers did see the Australian market uh, receive a boost, and that really supported the market for the last few hours of the afternoon. And then you can see that on the close, we received another boost up as well. So very bullish sign mm. going into the U.S. session tonight. The U.S. futures also being very closely watched, and they were up by about 1% during the session, which is quite unusual to see such strength during the Asian session. So that was supporting the Aussie market. And I guess there's some optimism around uh, the Jackson Hole meeting on Friday, although I don't think we're going to really hear of QE through three this time around because deflation isn't as big as a risk as it was last year. Yeah, I want to get your thoughts on uh, the Jackson Hole meeting and your thoughts on, on the Jackson Hole uh, symposium. While obviously markets on the one hand would like to see some sort of signal that they're going to get a lot more uh, free cash, a lot more liquidity in the system, at the same mm -hmm. time, wouldn't it also be concerning that it is almost an admission from the Fed that the U.S. is in trouble, the fact that it does need further quantitative easing and the fact that the previous two simply didn't work? I think the markets would like to see QE3, but I don't think the markets are expecting QE3, and that's because the deflationary question really isn't on the cards this time around. We have a look at the Jackson Hole meeting last year. Deflation uh, was a much higher risk, and that's what I guess uh, led to QE2 and uh, money printing there. But I don't think it's going to happen this time around. We're going to have to see a lot more deterioration in terms of the U.S. economy, as well as that inflation number coming down to see QE3 as a possibility at this point in time. Time. What the market is going to be watching for, although, is a downgrade to the Fed's own growth forecast for the U.S. economy. If we have a look at those forecasts, they're still uh, very high compared to the consensus. We know that investment banks have been slashing those forecasts, and it's time for the Fed to also step forward to uh, cut its too optimistic forecast. But, of course, it's not just Ben Bernanke that's going to be speaking at Jackson's Hole. And the other speech that I'm going to be watching very closely is on Saturday morning. The ECB, the European Central Bank President, 
President Trichet will also be there and he gives a speech on Saturday morning. So given the problems in the Eurozone, that's one that's going to be keenly watched by the markets as well. Julia, while I've got you, I want to get your opinion. Uh, everyone's still talking about gold and always interesting when you see con gold continue to, to trend higher as well as uh, equities. Uh, Scott, uh, gold spot futures above that uh, 1900 US dollars an ounce. 2000 now being uh, <laughs> called and being called in quick time as well. What do you make of that? Gold has had an absolutely phenomenal rise. We've now seen gold reach within $88 of that $2,000 target that a lot of people are talking about. And if we have a look at the last 52 weeks in gold in New York prices, we're seeing our gold up by a massive 50% in the last 52 weeks. And in Australian dollar prices, we're up by a massive 30%. If we have a look at gold now, it is in way oversold territory. So it does look like it is time for a significant pullback. And if we have a look at where that pullback may come back to if we have a look at the longer term chart in terms of gold this is gold over the last five years it's this uptrend line that uptrend line sits at just above 1500 points so you can see that what's happened in the last couple of weeks is this massive run up that we've seen in terms of gold prices running away from that uptrend now looking highly oversold so expecting to see a pullback in the coming weeks and that target line is just above that 1500 mark